Former President Donald Trump is set to officially file for the New Hampshire primary later today. He continues to hold a large lead in the polls over other GOP candidates. And over the weekend, some 2024 hopefuls held campaign events in Iowa, rallying support ahead of the presidential primaries. For more on this, we are joined by CBS News Director Finn Gomez. Good to see you, Finn. Good morning. So Donald Trump is uh, in New Hampshire. He's going to be filing for the primary there and holding a campaign event, despite Trump facing some, well, a number of setbacks on the legal front. How does he continue to be the front runner in that state? Uh, because it hasn't really impacted like that. The, 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 legal, the legal drama that he's currently faced with hasn't impacted his political base. And if anything, it's, 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 it's even uh, fomented and, and strengthened his positioning. If you look at the recent polls that have come out in the last few weeks, uh, he's up by like 30 points, Amory, uh, uh, compared to the rest of the Republican field. Uh, and so um, he continues to march forward, and and even though he is now, uh, you know, facing, um, you know, a thousand miles away from New Hampshire in Georgia, you see two of his co-defendants and former members of his legal team uh, who have uh, agreed to plea deals, and they could, um, you know, they could be, um, uh, they have agreed to cooperate with prosecutors. Uh, Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis uh, secured these plea deals from Sidney Powell and Kenneth Cheeseboro. Mm -hmm. uh, the highest profile defendants to flip so far in this racketeer case. But uh, but still, even though that's occurred and uh, there hasn't been a political impact so far with his support, 30 points, uh, and it has not really eroded so far. That's okay, because he doesn't know Sidney Powell. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's what right. he says. That's right. It is, it he says true. he doesn't yeah, know Sidney Powell. Powell. Never worked uh, for him. Yeah. Well, so let's talk about Nikki Haley and Ron DeSantis. They're battling out to be the principal alternative to Donald Trump, and it's getting ugly. Uh, yeah. What more can you tell us about that? And when we say the alternative, I mean, when the candidate who's leading you is leading by some 40 points, I, I mean, what are you really battling for? Uh, you know, they are battling for this second place positioning. The two have gone back and forth over the conflict in Israel and trading barbs over the possibility of, of the U.S. receiving refugees in Gaza. Uh, and you saw just this week the pro DeSantis super PAC. They rolled out this ad, Vlad painting Haley as being sympathetic to these refugees, which, you know, has, has been somewhat, you know, uh, controversial in, in um, parts of the Republican Party. And, and meanwhile, there's this pro Haley pact that's been going after uh, DeSantis, saying that, you know, over the, some reports that he's losing donors, which he is. Uh, but there's a new USA Today, USA Today Suffolk National Poll uh, today that shows that Haley may be winning in this battle for second place. Uh, uh, she's essentially tied with DeSantis, and she's only seen some momentum up while he has slid down. But as you mentioned, Flat, Trump still leads by double digits. Uh, and you've seen uh, that he's not only attacking DeSantis, as he has for months on his social media platform, but he's also going after Haley and calling her names. Mm -hmm. So it, it may indicate that, you know, she is being seen as somewhat of a political threat, even though, as you mentioned, she is, they're both very far in recent polling from Trump and his positioning within the Republican primary race. Um, meantime, former Vice President Mike Pence's presidential campaign seems to be struggling. What's going on with that? Yeah, you know, Amory, I spoke to some Republicans close to his campaign who say there is some worry about this trajectory, about his trajectory. Uh, you know, he's had a, he had a very weak fundraising uh, quarter last quarter. Uh, and, you know, some of our reporters in the field uh, have noticed that he's had very small numbers at, camp at campaign stops, sometimes as, you know, 15, 12 people that have gone. Uh, or, and there's also been somewhat of a, like a tepid response to him. You know, and I, you know, I spoke to another campaign operative, a, a presidential campaign operative who's not aligned with any campaigns this time around, uh, who, looking at the numbers, looking at his fundraising, say he, say he may not even make it to the third debate in Miami on uh, November 8th due to those fundraising concerns. Yeah. And, and, you know, another Republican operative I spoke to, uh, who's, who was really, in, you know, really close to his campaign, says that, you know, quote, the writing may be on the wall. His largest impact, though, and we don't want to predict, we don't, we're not in the game of, of predictions here, but, you know, his largest impact could be if he were to maybe endorse uh, before the Iowa caucuses, where he still has some support there amongst the evangelical faith voters, uh, he could have an impact in that in that you know in that way. But you know, other Pence you know aides and supporters tell me that they they see him going through at least the Iowa caucuses before we may see a um, a change.
It's so, it's so remarkable to me. A guy like Mike Pence probably signed on with Donald Trump mm -hmm. because he thought that this would be his springboard to someday becoming yeah. president of the United States. And he's but got on the conservative street cred. Right. Like, it would make sense. But on the flip side, enabling yeah. this former president in the way that he did and others who are vying yeah. for this shot has led to this, this enormous strength that Donald Trump has within yeah. the electorate, the Republican electorate, that is, un, you know, they're not able to match it. So it's, yeah. it's and, and here, meanwhile. And, and as a result has sort of weakened everyone else. Exactly, yeah. exactly right. Meanwhile, one person who did go after Donald Trump, lost her seat in Congress because mm -hmm. of it, is former Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who was on Face the Nation on Sunday, Finn, as you know, and said the House is in chaos, essentially, as a direct result of Donald Trump mm -hmm. and also former Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Let's take a listen. I think what you're seeing right now and among the Republicans in the House is a direct result of the decisions that Kevin McCarthy made to uh, embrace uh, Donald Trump, to embrace the most radical and extreme members of our party, to elevate them. Um, so it's not a surprise that we are where we are, but, but it's a disgrace and it's an embarrassment. It's a disgrace and an embarrassment, Benny. Yeah, and I think that, I mean, to your earlier point, Vlad, I mean, this is someone who was uh, the who represented Wyoming's at-large congressional district in the House from 2017 to 2023. Uh, uh, she was a, the, then became member of leadership, right, and then became a vocal critic of the former president after January 6, 2021. Going back to your Mike Pence comment, uh, but you know she essentially lost her positioning after the you know after the House Republican Conference, uh, you know after they they voted her out, you know after essentially because of that, you know so, uh, but you know even after being removed uh, from that leadership role, there has been some talk about her potentially getting in the race in some form. She didn't seem to discount it, Vlad. She seemed to, like, you know, still sort of leave that option on the table. Uh, so, you know, I, there is still some, even though it's the, the windows are getting smaller, you know, it's, you know, the deadlines are coming up to get on the ballot. There is, there's, there's still this underlying talk that you hear within the Republican Party of a finding another alternate. Maybe if, like, the, if the current field doesn't make it, maybe there's someone else in the wings. We heard, like, a lot Lot about that with uh, Glenn Youngkin, the governor of Virginia. Uh, some talking, some talk about Liz Cheney. Like you know, it would be an enormous uphill climb looking at the latest numbers. But there is that still, still that underlying discussion happening uh, within some enclaves of the Republican Party. Mm. All right, Finn Gomez for us in Washington. Finn, thank you as always, my friend. Thank Appreciate you. it.